see that? What is that? Am I the only one that gets triggered by this? If this had been Inconel or Titanium, this cutter would be toast. It would be just like if you ran one of Jesse's programs first time through. Now, this has happened to me a tons of time in the past and I have broken tons of tools because of what you just saw. Yes, I'm not fired! Today, I'm gonna show you guys a super cool way to get rid of this problem forever. Most of the time, when you're doing dynamic milling, especially deep cuts, you're gonna start on the outside and you're gonna work your way into the inside. Now, alternately, you could pre-drill a hole and then work your way from the inside to the outside. In both of these scenarios, we end up having a problem. Now, when you get what you see here on my screen, one of a few things is gonna happen. Either this post is gonna bend down and then your tool is gonna come and just nail it. The post is gonna break and that's gonna cause the flute to your end mill to chip or worst case scenario, that post is gonna get sucked into your cutter and break the end mill. Now, if we would have done the opposite and we would have pre-drilled the hole in the center of our part and then worked our way to the outside, we would have ended up with the opposite problem. We would have ended up with a really thin ribbon of material around the outside shape of our part. And as we pierce through that, it would either get wrapped around our cutter and again, break our end mill, or it could get sucked into our flute and then we have the same problem, chip flute broken tools. So let's look at what we can do to alleviate this problem. So what I've done here is I've created a thread milling tool path and I've added taper to it, but I'm not going to machine this using a thread mill. I'm going to machine it using a half inch end mill. So you can look, my tool is just a half inch bull nose end mill and my cut parameters, I've given a major thread diameter of one inch and a taper angle of 10 degrees. Make sure you go check out our second channel, Titans of CNC Podcast, and subscribe to it because we go over all sorts of industry secrets, knowledge, you name it. You're not going to want to miss it. Go check it out and subscribe. Back to the video. So if we simulate that toolpath again, check out what happens. Slowly, we're tapering down to the center. And then we come in from the outside and start working our way in. As we start approaching this funnel we've created, notice that we're cutting on the top side and then working our way in until there's nothing left on the bottom of our floor. By doing this, what would have been a post if we had just done our normal dynamic milling ends up being a tapered wall. And as we work our way in, that wall just gets shorter and shorter and shorter until it's completely gone. And we have no problems with our end mill, no snap flutes, no broken tools, and we can just go about our business and continue with machining our part. For now, CAM softwares don't have this solution integrated into their dynamic tool paths. Maybe in the future they will. But until then, this is a pretty easy fix. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys again next time. one that gets triggered by this? If this had been Inconel or Titanium, our cutter would be toast. It would be just like if you ran one of Jesse's programs first time through. <laughs> <laughs>